I just built this five kilowatt hour system with a three kilowatt inverter and up to 900 watts of solar input. I just built this system for $1,600, which is thousands of dollars less if I were to have bought a prepackaged system like a power station having the exact same specs. Hi guys, welcome back to the Minuteman Prep YouTube channel. My name is Ben and this is one awesome backup power source. Now, Redodo reached out to me and they said, hey, we wanna support the preparedness community more. What would help them more? And I said, you know, I really loved these 12 volt, 200 amp hour plus, it's gotta be the plus batteries. Those are the ones that I really like because they're a really good deal. They're just over $500 per battery. And each one has just over 2.5 kilowatt hours or 2,560 watt hours of battery capacity. And because they're lithium iron phosphate, they're super safe, they're very long lasting. And for the price, they're some of the most affordable batteries out there. So I wanna thank Rodoto for sending out these batteries for the channel to review, to show you guys how you can make your own DIY system like this very affordably, but that will not change my opinion on any results or anything that we test here in this video or in general. So let's go ahead and jump right into how I made this very powerful system because this realistically could sustain my household essentials for many days on end without any difficulty at all. Just to show you what we're working with, you can see the two Redodo batteries. These are both 12.8 volts at 200 amp hours, and it is their plus version. The distinguishing feature that's different between their 200 amp hour plus and just their 200 amp hour battery is that the 200 amp hour plus has a faster discharge rate and a faster input rate, meaning you can discharge and recharge them much faster. And that's something that I really like about these batteries. Generally, I really only recommend the plus versions to have that stronger BMS in it. So at our base, we have our two batteries right here. Here is my Renogy 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. It is a 12 volt inverter. You have to make sure you match the voltage of the inverter to the voltage of the battery. Now, because I have two of these batteries, I could change how they are wired and get a 24 volt configuration. But if I were to do that, I would fry the inverter. So I don't wanna do that. So you can see I've got my inverter cable here to this positive and this inverter cable to this negative. That way it's split between the two batteries. And because of how they're connected in parallel, you can see this black cable comes through here, goes to that black post, and then this red positive comes through here and goes to that red positive. So we're basically expanding the amperage. So this becomes a 400 amp hour, 12.8 volt battery setup. And then right here, I have my MPPT charge controller connected to the batteries. So right now I'm inputting solar. I have solar input going in right here and then it's going through getting converted from 120 volts DC to 13.4 volts DC out here and going into the batteries for the proper charge voltage. Right now I'm only getting about 450 watts because it is a cloudy day. But the cool thing is I've got 450 watts going in and then I am running the inverter to run this heater right here. And as you can see right here, I'm using almost 1200 watts to run this heater right here. The point is just to show that I can run the heater because it is a heavy load. The point isn't to run an electric heater. I just wanna be able to see if I can run a heavy load, which these batteries are easily rated to as well as the inverter, as well as the MPPT has good solar input. You can see all of the specs right here. We are rated to usable capacity of 200 amp hours. And all of that information here, even the peak discharge for up to five seconds can even go up to 400 amps. So the total max continuous load, power is another word for watts, is 2,560 watts. So by having these two paired together, I can actually double that output because both of them are rated to 2,500 watts output. So theoretically, I could actually run 5,000 watts output as long as I had an inverter that could do that, which I don't, but that's how these work. So you can see the dimensions here as well as the temperatures for the recommended usage and then things to know before using. It is recommended to charge up every three months. I personally don't and I've never run into an issue, but that's something to be made aware of. So here it's saying that it likes to get around 600 watts of solar input in order to be close to the proper charge speed for maximizing life cycles. 
It is rated to 4,000 life cycles, and if you don't use it as hard, it lasts that long or longer. I personally like to run mine harder because this is the real world and I need to draw more and use more. Here it shows you how to do a series connection if you wanted to get 48 volts, or here if you wanted to do four of them in parallel. And so if you wanted 24 volts, you would just cut that in half. You would just go from the negative of battery one to the positive of battery two, and that's gonna get you 24 volts. When you do parallel, you have to connect all the positives and all of the negatives together, but that keeps your volts the same and increases your amp hours. It's got guides on how to connect all the batteries. So overall, this is a very useful user manual. This entire system costs about $1,600. The batteries are just over 500. If there's any coupon codes or anything like that that I have for any of this equipment, I'll have it in the description below. This compares directly to these other systems that I have right here. For example, the EcoFlow Delta Pro. A single one of these has a 3600 watt hour battery instead of a 5.1 or 5100 watt hour battery. This has a 42% larger battery capacity and it's technically rated to more cycles, but both of them use lithium iron phosphate. Now there have been a lot of deals on the EcoFlow Delta Pro and you can get these refurbished for a little over $2,000, but there are a lot of hiccups and issues with the refurbished units from what people have told me and from what I've experienced. So know that going into it, there may be little quirks to getting a refurbished unit. New, they're closer to about $3,000. So this has 40% more battery capacity for about almost half the price as one of these new. All of this equipment is new, so new to new comparison, almost 50% off. In comparison to the AC500 here, which does have a 5,000 watt inverter, this one uses an expansion battery back here, the B300S. It is rated to about 3,000 watt hours, and so that's more like 50% more battery capacity here. Definitely a larger inverter here, but as far as the battery capacity goes, this one wins, and again, is about half the price. This is a unit that I haven't had my review up about it yet. It's from Elec Hive and it is a 2,500 watt hour battery. So it is basically equivalent to one of these batteries. This alone costs more than this entire setup. Now this is much more compact, much more user friendly. It shows state of charge. It's gonna show you your input and output much easier. And that's really what you're paying for in a power station is the conveniences and the bonuses like apps. You can control and monitor it wirelessly. Everything is pre-programmed for you, including USB output, AC output, all of those benefits, as well as even cigarette lighter ports. This is a 24 volt, 25 amp output. So very nice for those using 24 volts for RVing and van lifing. You're not gonna get that so easily out of here. You can do those 12 volt loads out of the MPPT right here. There is a spot for it. So there are some benefits to going with a power station and a lot of people just don't wanna do this wiring. And this wiring is very simple. I have my MPPT wire, I have my inverter wire, and I have my battery wire. It is really not that complicated but it can be a little daunting or scary wondering if you're gonna get some sparks or if you wire something wrong. Because if you wire something wrong, it could get really nasty. I'm not trying to scare anybody out of this. The whole point of showing you this is that it's easy and that I recommend it. I've had this battery here for a long time, probably at least six to eight months, and it's worked flawlessly without any issues. I've not had a single hiccup with it. I got the second battery so that I could double the capacity and show you how this works. Now, a typical refrigerator can use about 125 watt hours for every hour that it runs. The way that that works is it uses about 400 watts while it's running, but it doesn't run for 60 minutes of every hour. It's gonna run for 15 or 20 minutes of every hour, depending on the ambient temperature, how full it is, how efficient it is, all those things. So if you wanna play it safe, round it up to about 150 watt hours per hour. If we wanted to find out how long this battery would run a refrigerator, all we gotta do is take the battery capacity, which is 5.12 kilowatt hours or 5,120 watt hours, divided by the total hourly wattage usage, which I call watt hours per hour. And it's gonna run for 34 hours nonstop. That means if I had no solar input, no charge going into it, it would run for about 34 hours. Now it could be more, it could be less. Theoretically, it could be more because at night, I'm not getting in and out of the fridge as much, so it's gonna stay cooler. If I had a fridge, and a freezer, like a chest freezer, I would just double that number, make it about 300 watt hours an hour, 
or maybe closer to 250 watt hours per hour for a chest freezer because chest freezers are even more efficient since cold sinks and it's a chest. But the coolest thing is even on a cloudy day like today, I am getting 430 watts going in. And right now I'm just running the heater on the low setting, which is about 550 watts. But if I were running my fridge, my freezer, my security, my Wi-Fi, all the things that I typically run off of a backup system like this, I could absolutely run this for weeks, if not months on end, as long as I get a sunny day at least every other day, because the battery capacity is big enough to handle all of those loads and get recharged in a single day while still running the equipment. I just need one day. So if it's cloudy today and I'm getting no solar input, but tomorrow is sunny, that's not a problem because I'll get fully recharged and continue running everything. So I like Rododo's batteries. They're very high quality. There are many other YouTubers who have broken them down, looked at the internals and compared the internals to other batteries. And I have not found anything that they say negative about the inside. It is clean cut and it is made well. So far, my experience with customer service has been good. So if you're looking for an affordable way to build a system that you can have on an off-grid setup, like an RV or a cabin, bug out location, just as a home backup, whatever it is, these are the simple items. Battery, charge controller, inverter, and many inverters you can find with charge controllers built into them. So there's really only two components, which would be the battery and the inverter, because the charge controller is built into the inverter. Guys, this is as simple as it gets. Some of the things that I would likely change is I would add a DC breaker to my solar input because then I can connect the wires and have the breaker turned off, which means it's not gonna allow any energy to go in to the charge controller until I flip that switch. It's just a little bit more of a comfort. Same thing goes for the inverter. I would put a DC breaker that's rated to the high amperage for the inverter. That way I can connect dead batteries by having the DC connector switched off and then flip the switch. And I don't necessarily then have to use a resistor in order to kind of pre-charge the capacitors. All the wires are already gonna be there and the spark's not gonna happen. Using that DC switch on here basically helps eliminate the scare of a spark because we're only working with dead wires. You could even do the exact same with the battery cables. You could put DC switches on all of it and that would make sure that there's no sparks at any time. And once you flip all the switches, everything is up and running. Guys, if you found this helpful, make sure to smash the like button and check out Rododo. I thank them for sending this out. I have personally used this equipment for a long time without any issues. So for me, I give it two thumbs up. If you have had issues, I need you to comment down below so that way other people know and then tell us about the follow-up. How did their customer service treat you and so on. Thank you so much for watching to the end. Be prepared. See you guys in the next video.